First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. All right, you back with First World of Radio, your host, Dr. Aline Bay. Tonight, discussion is going to be more of science history and how it relates to the Circle 7. All right, brother Fahim came up with this subject matter for tonight's discussion. So I'm going to bring him in. My co-host, brother Fahim Mel Grand Sheik, you here, brother? How are you? How are you? How are you? How you doing tonight? Doing well, brother. Doing well, God. How you doing? Doing well. Doing well. So um, where you want to begin at with this tonight's discussion here? We can where you want to go with, with it? I can go with the... Uh, Dealing with the seven worlds, as as oh. you have uh, uh, with, uh, dealing with uh, the, the circle seven and, and more history right. of science. Uh, you have right. written, <clears throat> written in your book the first world order. Uh, it says here the world of God, the world of virgin spirits, consists of seven regions, and it is the abode of the virgin spirits, the vehicle of man, the world of divine spirit. The world consists of seven regions, and it is a abode of this highest spiritual influence in man, life spirit. world of life spirit consists of seven regions, and it is a abode of the second aspect of the threefold spirit in man, human spirit. World thought, region of abstract thought, seven regions, region of concrete thought, mind, desire world, desire body, seven regions, physical world. Etheric region, seven regions, chemical region. It has here all the seven, the seven heavens, you know, from the first to the seven. Uh, you don't want me to read all that. There's a lot of reading here. Do you, uh, <laughs> you want me to read it? I'll do it. Well, you, you, yeah, I mean, you can get, yeah, get out what you can then. Get out what you can. I oh, mean, we, okay. we got two hours, so, so I don't think nobody's going to be bored by a couple. Because <laughs> today, this discussion is about the Circle 7, 
and be trying okay. to bring it to them from a more, like you said, an esoteric or metaphysical perspective as compared to them thinking about a book or just a book. You know, exactly. um, it goes in there because the circle itself, like you said, symbolizes spirit. Mm -hmm. um, what are those seven? It's been a, you know, symbolic to um, what they call the will within the wills, which is what is called a chakra or, you know, as we know it within the Sanskrit teachings, within um, African traditions, um, we have it um, within Egypt as the Doritu, which you have what's mm -hmm. called the seven lions um, mm. or the seven souls of Ra, which is oh, right. um, within Hebrew is known as the seven Elohim or the seven archangels in which that we know them as being Michael, Gabriel, um, mm -hmm. Raphael, you know mm -hmm. it as Israel, or Asrael, as he's referred to, you know it as Gimiel, Samuel, as well as also Uriel. Mm -hmm. So those symbolizes the seven archangels, which is seven Elohim, which is the seven chakras or seven churches, which mm -hmm. is the seven seals in which that's supposed to be broken or, you know, within the last days. Right. Um, and other words, before your last days, before the end of the physical body, you must open and activate those particular chakra systems mm -hmm. or endocrine plans, as they refer to as. So, mm. yes, that, that's why we're going to discussion because we're going to go into um, the deeper aspect of what the Circle 7 really means. So, God, uh, continue on, Brother uh, Fahim Grand Sheik. Okay, we have the first heaven, Shamayim, or Shaming. The first heaven, Shamayim, borders the earth and is ruled by Archangel Gabriel, or Gabriel, as some some would say. This is the lowest of the heavens. It borders our world and is thought to be dwelling, uh, to be the dwelling place of Adam and Eve. This heaven, being the first and closest to earth, acts as a shading agent for the earth. This heaven has clouds, wind, and upper waters. It is the home to, to 200 astron astronomer angels who keep watch over the stars. The second, the second heaven, Rakua, or Rakia. The second heaven, Rakua, is ruled by the archangels Raphael and Zachariah, and it is according to Enoch. It is within this heaven that the fallen angels are in prison, waiting for final judgment in complete darkness. This was at one time supposed to be the dwelling place of John the Baptist. That's in the, the Gospels. Okay. The third heaven, Shagan, or Shakin, or Shahakin. The third heaven is unique for many reasons. According to Enoch, all hell, hell lies within the northern boundaries of the third heaven, Shagan, or Shahakin is ruled over by Archangel Anael and three subordinate Sars, Jagiel, Rabbiel, and Dalakiel. It is the residence of Archangel Israel, the Islamic angel of death. The northern region of this heaven has a river of flame that flows through the land of cold and ice. Here the wicked are punished by the angels. The southern lands are bountiful, paradise thought to be the Garden of Eden. Eden, where the souls of the righteous will come after death. The two rivers of the river of milk and honey and the river of wine and oil flow here. This heaven, if it were, the tree of life can be found. The beautiful celestial garden is where all perfect souls go after death and is guarded by 300 angels of light. The fourth heaven, Makanon or Makan. The fourth heaven, Makanon is ruled by Archangel Michael, or Michael, is the site of the heavenly Jerusalem, the holy temple, and its altar. As in parentheses, Goodwin, page 122, it is here that according to Enoch, that, that Gordon of Eden is actually housed, not in the third heaven. The fifth heaven, Matthew or Macan. The fifth heaven, Matthew, Matthew is the seat or home of God, Aaron, and the Avenging Angels. The beautiful southern region is where God can be found, while the, while the northern boundaries are said to be ruled by Metatron, twin brother, Archangel Sambaphon, or Samuel, Camiel, or Chamiel, 
This region is like a great void of fire and smoke, which had no firm ground above or below. <coughs> Excuse me. The sixth heaven, Zabul, Zabul, or Zabul. The sixth heaven, Zabul, is ruled by Archangel Zakiel and, and his subordinates, Princess Zubul, during the day and Sabbath during the night. It is the, like the angels, University of Knowledge who study an array of subjects, including astronomy, ecology, the seasons, and mankind. The seventh heaven, Arabah. The seventh heaven is the holiest of the holy heavens. Arabah is ruled by Archangel Kaziel and the home to God and his divine throne. It is also the abode of human souls waiting to be born. It is, it is also home to the highest orders of the angels, the seraphim, the cherubim, and the thrones. It is the seventh heaven that Isaiah has a glimpse of God and the Christ and hears the Most High dictating the program on his Christ earthly manifestation and return. In Enoch 2, the, he- the heavens, number 10. Here, the eighth heaven is called Mazaloth. The ninth heaven, home of the twelfth, signs of the zodiac, is called K- uh, Kukabim. The tenth, where Enoch saw the vision of the face of the Lord, is called Aravoth, Hebrew term for the twelve signs of the zodiac. The confusion of the heavens is clear here from the fact that the sign of the zodiac do not lodge in the heavens and name after them. The notion of the seventh heaven appears in the t- testament of the twelve patriarch, patriarchs and other Jewish apocrypha and was, uh, and was familiar to the ancient Persians and Babylonians. Sorry, the Persians pictured the mighty in the highest of the heavens, of the seven heavens, seated in a great white throne, surrounded by winged cherubim. The Quran also speaks of seven heavens. Hmm. Here we go. It is he who has created seven heavens, once upon another. The Hadith from Imam Ali mentioned the name of seven heavens is below. Rafi, Kadum, Marun, Afalun, Hayun, Aru, Ajma. Hmm. That's the end of this. This two pages here. Okay. Also, uh, the seven heavens. You deal with the the four gates of the seven heavens as well. Uh, you can get uh, the four gates, the four spaces between the four gates. Each gate uh, represents temple of God and the well, great high. And twelve signs, zodiacal division, the divisional end of the tw- of the gates, twelve angel powers. Hmm. The names written thereon: Pisces, Aries, Taurus. That is the that is the uh, the, uh, the north gate. Uh, the names of the twelve tribes of Israel is es- esoterically on the east gate. Three gates of the fourth of the north three gates and the south three gates, and on the three gates. These are the four divisions, the three gates each we found in the Zodiac, also in Ezekiel 48, 50, 35. In the midst thereof, a very center, and in fact, there was a city, the, the earth, and the name of the city, from that day shall be, the Lord is there. Hmm. All right, so what we was able to gather is that when you're talking about the realm of angels you talk about esoterically what is above what's below what's what's within and what's without essentially mm-hmm. all right as we was as you were stating about the seven heavens when each one do the research or study on the seven chakras or the seven churches they will find out that each one correlates to the other for example when you were saying about the seventh heaven mm-hmm. and how at the seventh heaven the souls awaits to be born well it's a known fact that the sperm travels up from the from the prostatic fluid through the cere- to the um through the spinal fluid to the cerebral fluid mm-hmm. within the third ventricle of the brain to be baptized by the soul principle which resides within 
what is called the third eye or what is called the pineal gland. And once this spark is given to the sperm, everyone knows all the other sperms, all the 777,777,776 other cells already know that that sperm in which that is sparked is the Christ who was baptized in the River Jordan. See, these stories are esoteric about what is already happening or has happened within the physical body of man and woman. So as now, in the seventh heaven, that sperm sat there before the throne of God to receive, to receive the spark of light. It is there that God breathed into the nostrils of man symbolically and made man a living soul. Hence, receive that soul or that raw spark of life, that that shekel or shekel, mm. which means that power was received to become a netter or a force of nature. And that sperm traveled back down the 33 vertebrates. As it is stated that Jesus Christ died on the cross at the age of 33, the cross being the physical body itself. And now, Jesus, which symbolizes the fleshly body or the spermazoa, which forms the fleshly body into existence, now comes back to reside within the testes or testicles to be gushed forth into the woman to form the flesh or the word made flesh. Mm. Now, you go to the Holy Quran, Circle 7, it states in there specifically that man is the breath made flesh. That Mm -hmm. man is the breath made flesh. Now, that's deep. Because when you think about it, what holds your physical composition together? Stop breathing and watch your ass decompose. Exactly. (laughs) So the breath is what composes your physical anatomy. The insulation and the exhalation. In other words, the centrifugal and centripetal force, the push and pull, which is the breath itself. In its rhythm, in its cycle, in its pattern, in its mode, in its scheme, is what keeps the physical body together. Without it, it unravels. It decomposes. So, it seems to me that the major thing that we all need to be focusing on is the science of breath and the yogi masters, the Buddhists, the Shaolin monks, the Taoists, all these various, quote-unquote, so-called religious sects if that's what you want to refer to them as, have it on point that the main thing about life is the breath. Matter of fact, it's called the breath of life. Mm -hmm. Which is mentioned in Genesis. So we understand that the breath of life is the most important. You can go without, like we said many a times, you can go without food for 30 days or more. Mm -hmm. You can go without water for two weeks. But try going without the breath for three minutes or more and see what happens. Exactly. As I always say, um, I'll call 911 for you. (laughs) So we have to understand that when you read these various books, tonight is just a circle seven. Um, You've heard me speak about the Bible, the Holy Quran, the Bahava Gita, the Hispanishads the Murder Baba, or the Marapada, um, heard me speak about um, the Zenavesta, many other books, you know, in which that all correlates to the same information. These are actually text books, ancient textbooks about the human anatomy and the influence of astrological events and alignments, constitutional alignments, and how it plays effects upon the physical body. All right? That's also symbolic to the school. It's symbolic to um, our sun and solar system traveling through the 12 zodiac signs every 25,928 years. 
or what is called great year, and how that plays or affects or plays a part in your everyday um, life or over the years. Of course, you don't live to be the whole 25,928 years. However, you have something similar to that in which that is called a great day, in which that during a 24-hour span, you take 25,920-some-odd breaths in 24 hours or every day. So you have a great day or a great year once a day. All right, so... Um, sorry about that, brother. Um, so oh. I ain't give it to it. Go ahead on. Okay. Uh, here we have uh, the seven holy names or seven uh, tribal names. Also, we have the right. word El or Il. Actually, the name actually the name is pronounced Il, but I, I, uh, Il or El is good enough for me because both right. uh, pronunciations have very significant uh, 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 meanings. So uh, a lot of uh, Moors, I hear a lot of Moors, they say, oh, it's ill, it's ill. Well, you can call me ill, brother. You can call me ill, too. You know, it doesn't make any right. difference. Because, uh, right. you know, the, 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 too many Moors get hung up on that. Uh, right. Ill. I mean, although it is, called, uh, uh, it is actually called ill, but... Right, uh, but then ask them what it means. They'll tell you it means God. Okay, well, that's one aspect. But that's a English transliteration. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we also know it to be power. Or force, mm-hmm. you know. Because, so L is just like electricity, like, or electricity, exactly. or um, which is a force or a power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, so I mean, we have to understand that anyone can possess a force or power. So when they get upset about, uh, well, you can't be an L and a B. You can't. You, you, you can't say that you can't have a force or a power in mm-hmm. which that is back in you or which that is within you. You know, when, you know, uh, we understand that you have what is called prenatal life force energy. Prenatal life force energy is the energy in which that you are made from um, based on the sexual aspect of your mother and father and the energy that they was able to generate during the sexual experience and what formed your physical body into existence or when that sperm reacted and um, met with the nucleus of the egg to begin what is called mitosis, which is cellular division in which that formed the eight blastular pores in which that formed your physical body into existence. Mm. Um, We understand that whole thing is based on prana or chi or ki or kundalini, which is the all-pervading energy of the universe. The mother aspect, the queen of heaven or the universal goddess, all of that is talking about the kundalini. Um, So when you say the black Madonna, Mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about. Is the Kundalini when they're talking about over 200 countries in the world worship the Black Madonna and Child? The Black Madonna is the Kundalini, the first incarnation of the Kundalini in physical form was a black woman or mm-hmm. a Moorish woman or Moabitish, as we refer to her as. Mm-hmm. And this is what we have to realize is that that physical first incarnation is still here with us today and still should be a knowledge as such. But because of the patriarchal system in which that we live in, it's the masculinity aspect in which that is always getting um, herald to the front. And if you notice, based on the patriarchal society, we seem to have much more wars, disease, Famines, illnesses, as we would say, um, these things are abundant during a patriarchal rule because mm-hmm. everything becomes competition, you know, for resources. Um, look at the United States right now. 
corporation. Look at it right now. They are acting as a corporation, going into other people's lands, um, attempting to steal their resources by killing them off, producing genocides. Mm-hmm. Um, we see um, what is called the U.S. AFRICOM um, going into Africa, and part of their plan is to um, produce Ebola, whether it comes through the vaccines mm-hmm. or et cetera, exactly. to eradicate and genocide the people in Liberia. So th- this this is the thing. Funny how Abraham Lincoln backed Africa or uh, so-called Americans, so-called American blacks, as they refer to, um, as going back to Liberia, going back to Africa, and that was backed in the um, mid to late 1800s. And now here it is, you know, um, 150 some odd years later, they they doing what is what is a European um, grab back snatch, as we would say. They they um trying to grab it back. And so now they're trying to kill off the people in Liberia um, and in surrounding areas with the Ebola thing. And if you've been hearing the news here lately, they talked about the fact that the Africans are waking up and actually are killing the missionaries Mm -hmm. because of their um, attempts of spreading this disease within their village or within their um, tribe or territories. So uh, we see what takes place uh, when psychopaths run the world, male psychopaths advance, you know, um, sociopaths, you know. So we have to learn the science of the breath because not only will it control the emotions, which cuts down on stress, it cuts down on disease, it strengthens your auric fill. We spoke about before that um, there's three pranic breaths in which that people have been able to acknowledge. If you do any study of Choa Ko Sui, um, Grandmaster of Pranic Healing, he states that you have what is called empty retention, Breath, you have 6363 breath, you have 7171 breath. Whenever you do any of these three breath techniques, you expand your auric fill 15 feet outside of you as compared to the average human being. Auric fill is only three feet outside of them without any spiritual practice or whatsoever. And this ease, we're talking about less than a foot and a half. In other words, the more that the individual is diseased, the less powerful their auric field is mm-hmm. and is emitted from their chakras. The spinning of the chakras is what causes from the endocrine gland system that causes the energy or the heat or the aura to be expanded. That is what expands the aura. So, with a strong aura, this ease can't attack you. That's the whole point of what I'm talking about. So, people worrying about Ebola, they need to be worrying about mastering the science of breath. Because exactly. you can buy mm-hmm. the majority of things through that mastery. And as we stated, the Holy Quran Circle 7 specifically states that man is the breath made flesh. The Bible tells you that the word made flesh. And I'm only using these books because these are books in which that our people read or study. Personally, I don't need books in order to understand the science of breath. All right? Because mm-hmm. oral traditions have been brought to us, you know, over the years. I've had several grandmasters who have taught me many things. I've gone back and read, of course, hundreds and thousands of books over my lifetime and continuous study and reading. And have come to the conclusion is that once you reach the understanding of 
Know thyself of who you actually are. Books is good for affirmation or affirming what you already know because your soul will speak to you and tell you what is true. And what is truth? Truth is art. Well, what is art? Art is what? Allah. Mm. And Allah is nothing more than your crown chakra. All right? Muhammad mm. is nothing more than your crown chakra. Mm. Melchizedek, Michael, is nothing more than your crown chakra. Christ is nothing more than your crown chakra. All of these are cold words in which that symbolize that aspect of yourself, your higher self. All right? Mm -hmm. So, continue on, Brother Al. All right. You're saying that L means lawgiver. This is the first seven of the holy name, the first tribe or the first uh, civilized tribes. And they added two names, make it number seven. Okay, we got the L means lawgiver, force, power, God, God S, equals Cherokee, Tuscarora, Iroquois. Okay, we have Bay, number two, means governor, landlord, earth ruler, equals Choctaw, or the same as Washita, El Nabe, or El Nabi. Or Al Nubia or Nubian. Okay, we got the three. Number three, Al means force, power, God, Goddess equals Seminole. Then we got the number four, Ali, means Most High, Exalted, equals Creek, Muskogee. Then we have the five, mean Day, means Knowledgeable, Knowable, equals Chickasaw. We have Shabazz. Shabbat equals rest, meaning falcon head. Form of Haru equals Nanako, Malingam. We have Muhammad, one who is worthy to be appraised, equals Ben Ishmael or Ishmael. The Els, Bays, Owls, Al, Ali, Days, and uh, uh, the other two, Shabazz and Muhammad, represent the five tribes. Uh, the first represents the five tribes of Moors. Moors uh, as, as represents the title of nobility, and it's protected under the Constitution, Article 1, Section 9, where it states the United States can give anybody a title of nobility. Also, Article 1, Section 10 states take no title of nobility. That's what it states here in the Constitution. These are the five, right. the first five names of the five civilized tribes. The other two are also holy names. Okay, go right. ahead, but Dr. Now, right, I, I don't want to go all the way into that, Brother L. You know, we're okay. going to tie it in. Do me a favor. Go back a couple of pages and read the seven layers of the atmosphere. Okay. I think that will be interesting in order to correlate it to the seven heavens that you read about earlier. I go to the head of oh, no, seven heavens. Let's see here. What page would that be? Let's see. Oh, I don't even know right now. I don't even have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the book, but uh, but but I but I know is I know it should be around there or right for it when you was reading about the seven heavens and this talk about the seven atmospheres. Okay. You have to, you know, you have to. Typosphere, you have the magnetosphere, you have the stratosphere. Okay. All of that should be there. North Spanish, the North Spanish, somewhere. Because I read about it not too long ago. I know what you're talking about. Mm hmm. So it should be in that section somewhere. You know, we'll continue building. Okay. You know, as Brother L was talking about, we have the five civilized tribes in which that's what they became known as. 
Um, those, of course, are European names in which that they, you know, refer to or begin to call them by. You know, um, when you really look at the deeper aspect of what is really going on, and they're referring to these Native Americans or indigenous Moors, or as we refer to them as American blacks, as some refer to them as, because that's really who they were. Um, many of you are part of these Native tribes in which that existed here prior to the 400 years ago. As a matter of fact, the Empress stated that over 80% of us were already here. And that only 20 or 15, you know, less than 15% was actually bought here. And this is somewhat verified um, by several websites in which that states less than 600,000 um, Africans were bought here over the 400 year span. You know, even Emory University states that is what took place. Um, there's a report from several years ago of slavery and the books for a 300 year period. During the year period, um, I think it was about 305 years, they used it from around 1619 to 1865. Allegedly, the last boat during that time period came. Um, based on the amount of people in which that they stated came during that 300 some odd year period, you will actually only have about 600,000 that came here to North America. They said the vast majority went into South America, the joining islands, and Central, in which that majority went into South America, which was the Brazil area. All right? And that one went into the millions. So when we're talking about this, you know, you have you, you definitely have to look at, you know, all the aspects of what took place. You know, and a lot of this information, like Brother L is saying, is inside my book called The First World Order, in which that we dealt with the mundane aspect of our aspects, life aspects of, you know, the historical aspect, the Afrocentristic or Astrocentered um, as um, aspect all the way to the esoteric metaphysical aspect, the whole book goes through the whole thing. Um, seven chapters based on symbolically the seven chakras or the seven circles. All right. Didn't get to the seven status there yet. <clears throat> okay, okay. Well, um, we got um, Aborisha. Uh, who stated, I believe that wholeheartedly, I don't think for one second that they bought millions of us, uh, of anybody over here. And I would agree with you, but I'm using their statistics in order to state this is what they claim. Now, our claims um, is otherwise, as we know, as being um, astute. In history, over the last, I guess you would say, 25 years now, I know from my own personal research, is we've been to the British Museum, we've been to the Smithsonian, we've been to the New York Natural Museum, and the best other museums in New York, New York being the Empire State, that is, been to the Louvre which is in Paris. And guess what? For all these countries to have participated in slavery, not one museum has boats or remnants of boats from slavery. I found that very interesting that none of them have 
anything from that time period. And knowing how the European is, you can tell how he is with his savagery um, and his brutality and his dehumanizing nature um, through the police brutality in which has occurred through all of these um, from the chemtrails to the GMO food so everything in which that he's using in order to attempt to kill off the genes, to sterilize, to genocide, like I said earlier, psychopathic tendencies or psychopaths, sociopaths, you know damn well they will have remnants <laughs> of that in museums. They will have that very well out in the open. Mm-hmm. Not just a drawing in which that is the same damn drawing I've been seeing for 25 years. <laughs> How they packed Negroes in a shit and laid them down, you know, and even based on Emory University's reports or statistics, they state that they was only able to bring less than 200 to 500 on any ship at any given time and that based on the fact that it was a four, three to four hour month voyage from Europe to Africa then from Africa to America it took three to four months so that means they was only able to do two to three well some say three to four trips a year with 200 people You know what I'm saying? To 500. So, when you go back and do the statistics once again, your own, and just do some thinking, you have to think, well, what was they able to do during a three to four months voyage? You know, where did they get the distilled water from? Did they have a distillation machine? <laughs> it was able to transform salt water into Drinking water? Did the European have that technology? You know, so because you got two hundred to th- to, to five hundred cargo, precious cargo, you have to make sure that you have to give them water daily or weekly, so that they would not die. You know from the salt water, um, which is now you you need more water, you know when you out on the sea, you need more fresh water when you out on the sea. As a matter of fact, you know than you do um, any other time. You know because seawater has an evaporation effect upon you, mm-hmm. a dehydration effect upon you. So you would need more water. So, once again, I'm asking, where are the distillation machines at that the European had 400 years ago? What the museums, these pristine museums around the world, which I've been to, my wife has been to, like I said, to the Louvre in Paris, which is one of the top European museums in the world, the British Museum, one of the top. Museums in the world. The Smithsonian, one of the top museums in the world. <laughs> and none of them have it? Never said anything about it? 25 damn years of research? <laughs> I haven't seen it. So something is wrong. Something is wrong. And we're not saying that we're not from Africa because we are African. The word mm-hmm. af or afu means flesh or temple or house within the ancient Kemetic or Tamarian language. Mm-hmm. The word Ra, of course, means light or energy or photon energy. Sun. The word Ka means spirit or spiritual soul. So you are the house or the flesh of the sun and spirit. So you are African in that particular term. 
Mm-hmm. But we're just saying that most of us was here before 400 years ago. That's all. Right. That's it. And you know this by studying Ivan von Sodom's work. What was his work? They came before Columbus. Right. That means mm-hmm. you did before 400 years ago. Mm-hmm. But exactly. these Negroes still want to debate. When they see the Omex civilization, and the Omex was Mandingos or Mandi people, which means they was related to the Dogons, and the Dogons were the ancient Egyptians who left from out of there 8,000 years ago, and they went into Mali. Part of the same family tree, and the Omex or the she people, as they was originally called, who form the Shang dynasty or the Xi'an pyramids there within China, as well as the pyramids in Peru, on up into Alaska, as well as the mounds throughout North America. He was the Omex. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, the she people. So these people been here, according to scientists, according to researchers, according to historians, according to anthropologists and archaeologists, over 5,000 years. That is far, that's more than 10 times farther back than what they claim that you were. They claim that you were just here 400 years ago. Well, the Omex proved that you was here over 5,000 years ago. The Folsom's mm-hmm. out of Arizona and Nevada was here over 75,000 years ago. The Twa people, um, the matter of fact, the Washita claimed they was here over 100,000 years ago. The mm-hmm. Twa people state that they was here over 2 million years ago. All right, if you get a book called Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Cremore and Richard L. Thompson, in the book it states that in Dorchester, Massachusetts, they found remnants of humanoids Dating back 600 million years ago. Hmm. Six hundred million years ago in America. In North America. Hmm. So whenever you want to debate about something, there is no debate. <laughs> there is no debate. No, because no history has proven that we have existed all over this globe. We are a global people. That's what even Brother said he had to state directly after the debate between him and I. Because I put up that fact that the general known as Dr. Khalid Muhammad stated specifically, specifically that we were global people and that Africa is our throne, but the earth is our home. <laughs> In other words, we spread it throughout the diaspora, not thousands, but millions, even billions of years ago. Now, once again, you go back to Michael Creedmore, Richard Thompson L., Forbidden Archaeology, The Hidden History of the Human Race. They stayed in there once again that they found remnants of humanoids and intelligent beings who made these mac, um, um, metallic objects in which that dated back 2.8 billion hmm. years ago. Wow. 2.8 billion years ago. So not million, billion. This is further back than Daganesh who is referred to as Lucy, in which that you have um, Richard Leakey and Louis B. Leakey, who leaked it out back in the 1950s um, about the so-called Africans being the oldest people on the face of the planet. But basically, you will find that within all of the occult books. You can read um, Charles Ledbetter, who was part of the Theosophical Society. He states that the Twa people, who they refer to as the Pygmies, are the oldest people on the face of the earth. Hmm. 
So remember, this was before 600 million years, 2.8 billion years. This was way before the so-called continental dress mm-hmm. based on science or scientists. They state that the continental drift occurred 200 to 250 million years ago. That means that we walked across from Africa. So hence, when Prophet Noble Jali is talking about Northwest Africa, they was talking about North America because at that time, all the continents were together. And you mm-hmm. was able to walk across from out of what we call Northwest Africa of Africa itself into North America, which was part of Africa at that time. He stated that this was before the great Atlantic Ocean, before the great Atlantis. So this is before there was Atlantic Ocean. This is talking about when he's referring to in chapter 47 of when all the continents were together, which we refer to in history as Pangea. If you go to any geography class, they would tell you that at one time all the continents were together and it was called Pangea. Or, as Dr. Khaled Muhammad referred to it, as Asia. Mm-hmm. So, if you go to the Kabbalah, they refer to the realm of the making as Asia. A-S-S-I-A-H. Asia. So, this is Asia, and we are Asiatics because we are in the realm of the making. Not mm-hmm. saying that we did not come from out the continent of Africa. Exactly. We're talking about the world being referred to at that time as Asia. Dr. Khaled even spoke about it within one of his last speeches where he talked about the fact that he was a Moor, and he said if he wasn't, he wouldn't have not said so. Mm-hmm. Now, understand what that means. The word Moor coming from the high priesthood of the Egyptians, who was actually Ethiopians or the Kushites, as they refer to, or the Tanesi, or Tanesians, the Tanesians, Nubians, as they refer to now, the Sudanese. They was the people, all right, who was over the priesthood in ancient Kemet, or Tamare, or Tamaria. And it was called Meru, M-E-R-U, Meru. Hmm. All right. The word Meru means the word Mir or Meru means pyramid or pyramids. They were the pyramid builders. Mm-hmm. These are the ones who were in and studied over forty years in ancient Egypt or ancient Tamaria. They researched and studied for over forty years. Remember, the ancient Egyptian mystery school, you had to be in it for 40 years to actually graduate. Mm. Wow. No, Euro- no European was in this ancient mystery school system for 40 years. Never. Not a one. Mm-hmm. Not a one. So even if you say Socrates, Euripides, Aristotle, Herodotus, and you refer to them as being white, which they weren't because during that time period, whites weren't even allowed into the ancient Egyptian mystery school. That didn't come about until after 732 B.C. with General Ptolemy, who was one of the generals of in the army of Alexander, who made himself the pharaoh, and he bribed Sylvester as he was referred to of the priesthood and formed the ancient Coptic priesthood in which that he bribed Sylvester in order to get initiated in which that he received three degrees of a nine degree system. So they never received the whole nine degree system and that three degrees becomes what we now refer to um, moderately as Freemasonry, the first degrees of Masonry, what is known as the Blue House on what is known as, of course, interventist fellow craftsman master mason. Right. Okay. So, this is what actually 
has happened. All right? Now, if you study the Rosicrucians, they have what appears to be the nine-degree system. I had several mm-hmm. teachers who have gone through that system. All right? And it was very advanced. And, of course, you can learn anything, you know, uh, from any group or organization. Don't mean that you have to become mind control. Always think for yourself. Right. You have a free will. But the research and study takes time, and it takes you going through these particular schools. This is what is not understood, is that that's all this is on planet Earth is schools. We get caught up to religion, the debates, oh, well, the RBG against the Moors and the Moors against the Hebrew Israelites and the Hebrew Israelites against the um, nationalists and the nationalists against the Pan-Africanists. And you know, all this is bullshit. All these are just schools. Exactly. Yeah. Just schools. The sad thing right, about that they all Moors. Right, right, right. If you study the Khan, if you study um, 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 Yoruba, if you study Palo Mayambe or the various Palos, if you study Santeria, if you study Hoodoo or Voodoo or Vudan, um, if you study um, all of these particular schools, these are schools. The more science. Right, these are schools. And with any school, there comes a time for graduation. Okay? It is true that you can learn, but your mind, you do not want to trap your mind. Your mind is infinite. Your mind is universal. The universe spans the whole gambit of what is called 76 um, quintillion miles in diameter. Hmm. Your cream history is 76 trillion years old. So you do not want to trap your mind in any dogma, any fallacies, any religion, especially not when a religion is not doing what it's supposed to do, which is realigning you back to your higher self. Mm-hmm. That's what religion or religo, which is a Latin word, which means to bind back or to tie back. Tie back to what? Bind back to what? Your higher self, your God, your personal Lord and Savior. That's what it's supposed to do. That's what yoga is supposed to do, which is the union. Samatawi, with an ancient comedic, means the union of the two lands, which is the lower self and the higher self. But you know, within the more Holy Quran, Sobre 7 is being the two selves. Mm-hmm. One deals with the higher self, which is the mother of virtues. The other one deals with everything that means and harms, which is the lower self. One is symbolic to Heru, which is the higher self. One is symbolic to Shek, which is the lower self. Both symbolizes sunrise and sunset. What is that sun? That sun is the kundalini energy as it rays up beyond the solar plexus into the higher heavens, which is to your crown chakra. And then as it comes back down, if you master in what's called the microcosmic orbit technique, it comes back down the front channel because you have two channels. So actually, it's one channel when you combine them and put them together. If your tongue is up at the roof of the mouth and you pull up your anal muscles, then you connect both of those channels called the governing vessel and the conceptual vessel and or what's called the functional channel. And the kundalini comes up and comes down. That is the sunset and the sunrise. Understand what they're really talking about. This is esoteric. This is not goddamn nursery rhyme. <laughs> that's the problem that's going on. We think that this is nursery rhymes or 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 Aesop stories, Mother Goose stories, or some shit. I don't know what I don't know what Negroes are thinking personally. I don't either. But I know the book right. I know these books that you need to read. I will get the four esoteric. Um, 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 the four gospels esoterically interpreted by John P. Scott. 
I would get The 12 Powers of Man by Cora Fillmore and Charles Fillmore. I would get the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary by Charles Fillmore. I would get the um, the Apocalypse by Philotus, P-H-Y-L-O-T-U-S, Philotus. I would get the um, Cosmic Christ. Okay, I would get in. I would get all these books. There's many, 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 many more. All right. Matter of fact, let me name some more for you. Because I hate to have you ignorant. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Get um, greatest Hermes by R.S. Me. All right, that's by G R S Me. Thrice Greatest Hermes. Get the Cobalion by the Three Initiates. Okay. Oh, once again, um, let me slow it down that way everybody can get it. All right, because I just seen the message in the um in the um chat room. The Metaphysical Bible Dictionary by Charles Fillmore. Okay. The Twelve Powers of Man by Charles Fillmore and Cora Fillmore. Okay. Meditation, the ancient Egyptian path to enlightenment. Meditation, the ancient Egyptian path to enlightenment by Dr. Muata Ashby. All right. The Coming of the Cosmic Christ, as I may mention of, is by Matthew Fox. The Coming of the Cosmic Christ by Matthew Fox. Gerald Massey Lectures by Gerald Massey. Uh-huh. I will also get his Books of Beginnings, Volume 1 and 2. Also, Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World, Volume 1 and 2. Uh-huh. I would get the other Bible, the ancient esoteric text. Um, it was edited by Wallace Barnstone, B A R N S T O N E, Barnstone. I would get the Pell Fox by mm-hmm. um, Jariol, which is spelled G R I A. U L E. All right. The Dead Sea Scrolls and the Christian Myth by Allegoro, which is spelled A L L E G R O. I will get Isis Unveiled. By Manon Bavasky, mm-hmm. as well as also the Secret Doctrine by Manon Bavasky. Mm-hmm. I would get the Etheric Double by A. E. Powell. I would get the Astral Body by A. E. Powell. I would get In Search of the Hidden Treasure by Rappapos. That's R-A-P-A-M-O-S. That's N-O-S, excuse me. I would get the Rosicrucian Mysteries by the Rosicrucians. Mm -hmm. I would get In Search of God 
volume one and two. All right. Now, for the energy books, these are the ones that I would um, recommend. For you can understand the way in which that healing and, and the science of healing plays into effect, you would get the Healer's Manual by Ted o, um, Andrews. You would get Why Darkness Matter and the Power of Melanin in the Brain. That's by Bruce or Edward Bruce Bryan, um, by, as well as um, Dr. Brown, Dr. Richard King, and Dr. Tim Moore. You also can get African Origin of Biological Psychiatry by Dr. Richard King. Hmm. You get Dark Light Consciousness, Melanin, Serpent Power, and the Luminous Matrix of Reality. By Edward Bruce on um, Bruce Bino. You can get the Kundalini Yoga by Shakti um, Kalsa. That's K H A L S A. You can get Dark Matters. Dark Secrets by Tim Owens Moore. Get The Science of Melanin, Dispelling the Mist by Tim Owens Moore. Get The Art of Tai Chi, A Practical Guide by Paul Crumpton. That's C R O M. P T O N. Get Chi Gong by Corny. C A R N I E. Get the Art of Chi Gong by Wang Q Kit. K I T. Wang W O N G. You get Inner Power by Christopher Killiam. K-I-L-H-A-M. And get Jewel in the Lotus by Grandmaster Sanyata Saraswati. Mm. And Brother Kimi, um, Kimi too, um told me to tell y'all to also um, to get The Temple of Man by um, Sawala Lubix. Hmm. Okay. Um, and let's also get the temple in man and the temple of man by the Lubix. Both of those. I agree, definitely. All right, get the secrets teachings of all ages by Manly P. Hall. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Get the deception of myths of the Bible. Deceptions and myths of the Bible. Oh yeah. Lord M. Graham. Right, Lord M. Graham, exactly. Thank you. Also get Ancient and Modern Britons by David Marici, volume one and two. Get all six volumes of the Metunetta. By Ra Nefa. Amen. Known as Shechem or Shechem. <laughs> Get the Time Life magazine or Time Life books of the of the mystic places, the search for immortality, psychic places, um, phantom encounters, mystic quests, alien can, um, encounters, cosmic duality. Um, ancient wisdom and secret um, sex, you know, all of these particular books, you know, these are the books in which that is going to help open you up to becoming mm-hmm. more esoteric and metaphysical in your understanding, understanding, understanding of self. 
Mm-hmm. These are just some of the best books that I can name offhand. All mm-hmm. right, get the path of the masters. Um, the ancient, um, um, the ancient, um, the ancient mystic teachings of the masters. You know, uh, shoot, there, there's so many books I go on forever. Yeah, and I don't want to do um, do that tonight, but just just check them out. This this is this is if you don't have some of these in your library, check them out and get them. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, let's go to the phone lines right quick. We get area code two one four. Area code two one four. You're on the line. Uh, hello. Peace. Peace. Hey, peace, God. What's going down? Hey, uh, damn. I've been meaning. This. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, man. Uh, I got a, I got a question, right? I know. I just know you just recommended like. 15, 20 books, you know what I'm saying? I read kind of slow, man. Like, what what can I eat or what herb do I need to start taking? Or, like, what meditation do I need to start doing to increase my, you know, my reading speed and, you know, my, you know what I'm saying, I guess, taking in knowledge speed? Um, Well, you can take various herbs, like you said. Um, In particular, ginkgo balaba, guadacola, ginseng. Those are called the three G's, and I will also take um, take it with a pinch of cayenne pepper because cayenne pepper oh. is the catalyst in which that can move those herbs the quickest to the body parts because it increases your circulatory system. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just found out about moringa. Is that, like, is, what, is that good for yeah. what I'm looking for? Moringa is good for overall general health, yes, because um, moringa is one of the richest – Chlorophyll plants on the earth. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hey, oh, yeah, I, got... mm-hmm. Go ahead. Oh. I just want to say this too. Brother Kometu just said another good one. It's historical origin of Christianity, as well as also historical origin of Islam, mm-hmm. and soon historical origin of Judaism. Um, all three uh, written by uh, Professor Walter Williams, who we've had here yeah. on this show. Yeah. Um, go ahead, brother. You, 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 you oh. always get a volume one and volume two. Of the hidden wisdom in the Holy Bible by uh, Jeffrey, yeah, uh, Jeffrey Hitz Hudson. Hudson, that's that. Thank you. That was the one I was trying to think of, brother. Um, L, man, you right on point. That's what I'm talking. About. That's that's my co-host right there. Thank you. <laughs> when I can't when I can't think of it, he got it. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Also, brother Kimetu said, um, "Signs and the Seventh Seal" is another good book. But go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Um. Uh, oh, yeah, another question about the words. Go ahead. Oh, oh yeah. I want I wanted to ask Brother L a question. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, if you don't mind asking, like, how, how young are you? How young I am? Yeah. I'm 61. I mean, are you 61? Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, when did you come into the knowledge, like, our true history? How old were you then? Our true history, uh, I would say back when I was, um, I was about 38. When I uh, came into the nation of Islam, I started studying, studying. Then I got into more science about a little about, mm, I'll say maybe two and a half years ago. Oh, so you just got into the more science about mm-hmm. two and a half years? Mm-hmm. So before then, you thought we were Africans that came from Africa on the boat? Uh, before then, yes, I did. So was that like a major life change for you, or, or was it like were you already kind of on that path and then it was? Just, uh, that you know. was a life change for me. That was a life change for me. Uh, uh, I always catch on fast. And okay. uh, when you give me something, uh, if you tell me something, then I will expand on it. All okay. I do is study, study, study myself, and then study other books, and then study other sciences, and especially more science, and that's how I caught on very quick. Okay. Okay. I see. It, it, you know. it, it, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. Once you know the science and once you know who you are, and how you relate to the universe and and, and everything else, it, 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 uh, <laughs> you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Because, see, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm dealing with a, my, my father, he's 59, and he just, he's too stubborn, he don't listen to nothing I'm saying, you know, he thinks that, you know, because he's older than me, he know better than me, and which he, I know he do on, you know, normal life stuff, but he ain't studied, you, you understand what I'm saying? 
So I was just right. kind of wondering, like, I'm trying to hit him with this, with the truth, and he keep denying me. Like, was it hard for someone of that age, you know, that may be stuck in their ways, or, you know, is it just my father? Because I'm starting to think it's just my daddy, you know what I'm saying? Very few, very, very few <laughs> brothers and sisters my age uh, 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 talk the way I do. Uh, mostly I have to talk to mostly brothers and sisters of the younger generation. Uh, i got a few brothers that, that, that talk like I do, a few, you know. Uh, you uh-huh. think brother like um, uh, that wrote the book, uh, uh, the more, I mean, the more the Negro, the black, you know, and so on. Now, right, you know, Ramani, he, he, right, right, brother um, Romani, you on um, Romani, right. Emmanuel. He's in his, mm-hmm. he's in his early seventies, so you know, yeah. you get you know brothers you know that's out. You know, I think uh, me and Taj Tariq Bay and I, I don't know, we around the same age. I'm not sure. I don't know how old Taj is. But uh, right. the way he talks, and he talking about back in 1970 something. I said, "Oh, he he close to my age." Yeah, right. He is. So you, you know, so I just say, you know, but it's not that many of us, you know. Like right. Taj is like up in his 50s, 70s. I mean, early 60s, bro. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh uh, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Say peace to Taj too, Taj Tariq Bay, because if it wasn't for him, and you know, like people like y'all, man. And I ain't no telling where I'd be and what I'd be doing right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to say I appreciate you. Man. Yeah, because I learned a lot from Marlene. You know, I learned a lot from Marlene. I'm still you learning. Know, I'm still learning. my man every time, you know. And and Marlene is somewhere in his 40s. You know, I'm in my 60s. You know, yeah. I'm learning from him, you know. Because I yeah, never mind right me of a, of, of a teacher, of another picture I saw. And I thought that the, the elders was teaching the child. And uh, this uh, this other this uh, the brother said no, brother, you got it wrong. It's the child that's teaching the elders how to read. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll never forget that picture. Uh, oh well, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to hold up the line no more, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Do I like? I don't want to hang up. How do I just keep? Oh, uh, appreciate you, God. Oh, just 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 stay on up. Just stay on. Uh, let me go right, to the next call. 331, 331, you're on the line. Peace, Brother Eileen. Hey, this is Sharon. How Peace. are you? All right, all right, got it. How you doing tonight? Doing good. Doing, doing well. Okay, I got a couple of questions for you. Um, I was looking into something called rebirthing, the breathing techniques. I know we never went over that before in your class. And I just wanted to get some right. information on, on that. That's my first question. I got something else after, but I'll, if you could just elaborate a little bit on that. And, um, right. I mean, I've been I, I doing a lot of breathing techniques. Right, right. So well, ahead. I haven't done – well, my teacher taught me it. Um, he's able to be, um, because mm-hmm. he actually was doing sisters and um, brothers um, down in Atlanta. He was teaching them how to do it. Um, I don't do that one um, mm, because okay. I don't have a lot of um, anxieties or fears. Oh, okay. that's that's really right. That's really built for those who really have those, you know, who might have been raped or, you know, been molested or been, you know, through those types of events or those types of things, and they need, you know, to mm-hmm. re, you know rebirth or go back and find themselves in that in that regard. You know, um, I can teach, I can teach, but that wasn't that wouldn't be something that's for everyone. You know, like for example, um, those who come into um, up under Master Sanyata, he taught us what is called the Cobra Breath technique, and of course, um, that's not for everyone. You know, that is um, an initiation right, within his heart, or either. Um, you know, or he'll teach you the mechanics of it and you can practice it on a daily basis. But that is still something in which that is of oral tradition, you know. So um, normally he stated that for those who come in, they're on their last incarnation who learns the cobra breath technique. Mm. See? So mm-hmm. a lot of this information isn't for the profane, isn't for, you know, casting pearls before a swan. This is some real serious, um, as I would say, shit. You know, 
you know, that we got to master, you know, and not just mm-hmm. talk about it. and everybody isn't, you know, trying to master. Some niggas are just curious. Mm-hmm. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. Okay. And, and and my next question, this might be a little bit longer, but I hope you can explain it. Um, I, I've been learning a lot more about um, past, present, future, time, and how uh, everything is now. And it was uh, a guy that was on the internet named Bashar or something like that. And basically he uh-huh. was stating something about how the things that you do right now, like the, um, if you want to change your past, you change yourself right now because every moment, uh, like every movement you make, every thought that you have right now, like if right. you want to, okay, for instance, if people that are thinking about the FEMA camps or Ebola and all that crap, and they're worried about right. that, um, those are the people that would be going towards that because they're they already have their mindset in that way. But if you want to change your future or change uh, your past, you think of, I guess, the positive thoughts, and that's like that doesn't even concern you, and therefore that won't happen to you. You'll be going. It was like parallel universes. He was talking about parallel universes and how. You can move forward right, I understand. Um, without right, even that. Right, I understand. So I just, just right. whatever you can do to, I guess, kind of break that down and explain it because I, I, I'm learning it, but it, it seems like it's something that's not all the way clicking on how that works. Uh, just the whole past, present, future, right. and how do you change yourself now? All right. Well, have you ever had de- deja vu experiences? Yeah, definitely. Okay. You know why? I, I mean, now I I'm, I know that it, it must be something that has happened in the past, and I'm just getting those memories now, basically. So actually, actually, it happened in the future, <laughs> <laughs> and you came back in the past, and you are experiencing what would have took place in the future. In other words, you have what is called out of body experiences, or astral travels, or soul travel, based on the activation of your solar plexus is astral travel. Based on the activation of your pineal gland or crown chakra, it is called soul travel. So, based on either of the two, you went into the future. You went into a futuristic timeline in which that you're, you're talking about a parallel timeline, the universe, and you was able to experience what would have happened. And when you mm-hmm. came back into body and went through that experience months later, years later, you understood what would have happened if you did not go for it. In other words, you changed it. Wow. So that's what he's talking about. The ability in order to change it by going forward and mm-hmm. manipulating the timeline. And you can do that through what is called lucid dreaming. Mm. Every night when you go to sleep If you wake up within your dream You can actually manipulate What can happen Because the astral energy becomes etheric And the etheric energy becomes physical mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's like when it rains Or as they say um, uh, When it pours You know uh, Rain goes up but it must come down With ideology mm-hmm. So when it pours down You can actually change the effect of it. That's what it's talking about. And you can do that through the lucid dreams. The lucid dreams. Wow. Right. Lucid dreams is actually one of the aspects that you can do it or, it, or either through out-of-body experience. One of the two, you can change it. Um, mm-hmm. Astral projection or what's called astral travel um, happens more so um, towards the, um, on the right, they call it the right articular section of the brain. If um, scientists have been able to put probes there and invoke mm-hmm. an out-of-body experience instantly or automatically. Now, lucid dreams take place at the back of the head, more so near the medulla oblongata. Mm. And soul travel takes place through the activation of the pineal gland at the top of the head, and you and it and you will hear it because it sounds like a like a like a snapping or or popping like a fire. Um, um, firecracker or or, or a twenty two um, gun mm. being released. Mm-hmm. It sound like a it sound like a loud popping noise. 
Wow. And that's the soul coming out from the top of the head. Mm. So mm. all these things take place. And um, that's what Master Sanyata taught is that um, he didn't teach astral travel. He taught soul travel, soul which travel. is more advanced. Because, right, because mm-hmm. astral travel is still within the four lower devils, which is the four lower chakras, which is the solar plexus, one of those four. Right, and so right. um, most people have not been able to deal with their issues, you know, their their fears, their anxieties. Mm-hmm. They haven't been able to deal with those those stress, those stresses. So he taught us techniques to bypass the chakra system until we can master them. And then you do that through the cobra breath, you do that through um or in the technique of what is called soul travel, as well as other various um techniques in which they taught. Mm. Okay. That's good. Okay. I, I, you broke it down for me. I'm gonna look up soul travel. I'm gonna get some information on on that too. I I I, oh, yeah. I was learning up. about that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Check it out. Well, thank thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Keep doing what you're doing, you and of course, I'm still gonna continue to listen. All right. You guys okay. take care. Appreciate you, guys. Right. you too. Peace. Peace. All right, we got area code 347. Area code 347, you're on the line. New York, New York. What's up with you? <laughs> you're in New York. What's going on, brother? Peace. Peace. Oh, man, you guys don't know. Every time I need answers, all I got to do is turn you on and then come on. You know, everything just lighten up. And I know you guys are the masters inside right now, you know? You inside us right now, just well, we, shooting the gift. <laughs> trying to master self, right? Huh? Trying to master self. <laughs> you don't realize what you're doing for a lot of us right here, trying to get with the same program, you know. But uh, at the same time, um, you know, all these challenges coming up, all, all these things coming up. Every time I try to, you know, move ahead, always little obstacles coming around, just trying to block the situation. But you know. I already know this is the last time I'm gonna be here because I already know I'm, I'm I'm in the same zone as you know, trying to get this right. information together. And, exactly, um, I got you. Yeah, man, things is just it, you know it's real. All you know, everything is it's just strange, it's chaotic, it's, it's but it's, it's 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 still lining up in its own it, you know its own special craft. Um, no doubt. Uh. I don't even know. All I know is um, I appreciate everything you you all are doing. Well, we appreciate you. I mean, appreciate you all for listening. Thank you for listening. Yeah, yeah, man. Incredible information every time. Every time I need it, it's right there. Right on all the right. money. Thanks. I yep. appreciate you, man. Yep. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. Yeah. Code 862. Area code 862. You on the line. Peace. Hello? Peace. Peace. Yes, we hear you. This is Tova. Hi, how you doing, everybody? Peace. How you doing? Hi, sister. How Peace. you doing? I'm so blessed, and um, I just love you all so much. And, um, Dr. Dean, you are so, it's like we're already communicating through the ether because of probably even beyond, above and beyond in a sense, because, um, there's a lot of, you know, I was really even building on the seven because it's such an enigma. I'm like, seven, like, what's up with you? Because, you know, you're an odd number, but seven sells even. What's going on? It's even, you know, so it is an, an enigmatic number. And um, you know how you're talking about um, the difference between astral projection and soul projection? Like, that's portal right. popping. That makes so much sense right. because it's always, I know you that pop, pop, pop. I'm like, oh, portal popping. And um, it's just, you know, a beautiful thing. And I just wanted to share that it is so important to the fear. Fear is just blocked energy. It's blocked love, and love is free-flowing energy. So it's interference. It's a roadblock in the blood clot, and that's the interference to get in the way of what is natural and the flow of everything. So it's so important to breathe. And breathe spells be earth, and earth spells heart. And... Um, I remember remember a couple of years ago when they made the announcement that the the black rhinos were extinct or something and 
I was really devastated about that, and I did a ritual, and I, I felt them calling out, and I was um, working with, like, the animals, and I just started seeing all these horses that's, like, free and this running, like, beautifully even wild and free on the mama land. I'm like, that's so beautiful, horse, and I realized that horse felt heroes. And then, like, um, I, I remember in fourth grade, I had to do some assignment where it was just, like, the medieval wars and stuff, and I was very traumatized, and we had to write out who our heroes were. And I'm like, oh, the horses are my heroes. And I just come across, you know, some of my old schoolwork, and I was reading that, and I just wanted to go back in time and be like, good job. But I didn't even realize at the time that horse spells heroes. And then I, I was drawing, you know, the shape of Africa, and then I turned it 90 degrees, and it's a horse head. Right, and exactly. like so, and then and then I was seeing how like that's a heart chakra of the earth, and obviously because the heart is ruled by Leo, and that's you know the lions and the and it was just you know so many confirmations and that vision, and I even made a collage for um Mama Kusunya and made her a collage on a piece of tile and decoding that and coloring in it and uh, painting it for her. And, like, I am beginning those visions even clearer now. And I'm understanding that, you know, because you're in the age of Aquarius, it's the elements of the water and the air, because it's a water bearer, but it's also air, which is spirit. So, I mean, we right. seriously have to breathe, you know, because that will, the yeah. more fear, the more panic, you'll close up our cells and our DNA. That's just no good. We can't fire right. up that way. Right. Exactly, exactly. And everybody should have got what you just said. You you just broke it down. Um, even though um, Aquarius is the water bearer, it's the sign of air. So, yeah, exactly, right. exactly. And the word air is in rain. So word air, everything right. has the word air, you know what I'm saying? And we, we don't right. want to be frozen because idol is so solid. We have to flow. So, you know, right. take notes of the office. You know what I'm saying? So um, right. that's all that, that that I just wanted to share and love you so much and peace to everybody and love you, Carlos. All the love. No doubt. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we got area code eight five zero. Area code eight five zero. You on the line? Um, yeah, uh, I might have had a question for um Doctor Eileen. Yes, peace. Peace. Oh, uh, sister. Uh, here, here, Rue. Um, I was just well, I wanted to ask you this quick question. Um, I seen um you say your video based on the law of attraction, you were talking about the breath also about you know how to clean the uh seven chakras and different organs right. in the body. And, um, yeah, I wanted to ask like you know, I also seen this video they was talking about the different energies well that's coming in during the month of October. There were two eclipses, the one that we had on the right. eighth and there was the moon, the new moon coming in. And there's one on the 23rd, which is my birthday, that um that's coming mm-hmm. in also. That was uh, right. I wanted to ask what kind of energies will we be dealing with? Because I'm trying to you know get more or uh, positive energy, trying to get you know up new energy that's coming in. But, you know, what kind of energies are we dealing with? with um, right, with and the plus the fact yeah. right, and plus around the eighth we also had the blood moon too, um around that same time period. So, um, we're talking about rituals in which that. Um, the European did and rituals that we have to do. Um, we see that on the eighth, that was the same time that they um told us that around that time period was right around when they told us about the first case of Ebola in the United States, and that correlated right around with the time um, of the guy, like I said on one of the last shows, um, Eric Duncan, he died. Um, on the eighth, during that same blood moon um, night, or you know, which was part of the ritual, and of course that blood moon symbolizes the tag, like hence Ebola. So we broke that information down in the in one of the last um, radio shows that we did. Now the two eclipse symbolizes the fact that you have the ability in order to eclipse that energy. In other words, to cancel out that energy. So being that most people didn't do the ritual on um, around that time period of the 8th, um, 7th, 8th, and 9th during that time period, if they was not doing their moon rituals, then the 23rd is the time that we have to do it, which is a week from now. So um, we definitely 
recommend everybody doing that within these next eight days mm-hmm. is to um, do your moon ritual, you know, um, get your candles, um, get a gray candle, which symbolizes silver, which is moon, symbolizes psychic abilities, enhancing the psychic abilities. Um, you can get a blue candle, which symbolizes um, increased communication. You can get a gold candle that symbolizes um, greater healing abilities, protection, um, white to eliminate negativity, repel negativity, black to absorb negativity. All right, so the various different candles um, doing a moon ritual is important, and of course the individual can work you know, work it on their own or either do their own research in order to find out, um, you know, there's also candles for each day. They can also do the day, um, you know, the day that it occurs, that candle for that particular day. You know, um, if you're looking at eight days from now, we're looking at the 23rd, that would be next Thursday. All right. So Thursday, um, of course, um, is Shango. All right, but Thursday also symbolizes Thor. All right, um, so we will be able to, which also is a form of hair rule. So you can also, the colors for Shango um, is red, so you can also light the red candle, which that brings forth energy. Okay. But also, well. Uh... I'm going to follow up. Mm-hmm. You were stating that well, you know, candle magic and well, you know, sex magic or you know, tantra, well, um, that was the highest form. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, hmm, cause I, well, I just ordered recently, like, well, one of your, um, I think it's uh, uh, the body, well, astrology chart, well, like your oil field. Right, well, astrology it's, chart. You know, on your site, yeah. It's on your information, like how how would you go by your daily life and uh, strengthen areas where like twelve aspects is divided into twelve, I mean, that's the one I ordered. You know what I'm saying? Because well, um, I know a lot of people, well, even those around me, like well, have well have made to like perform the well, sex magic, but is that I'm still single and I was well, searching for that mate, but I don't well exactly know well or well having made to perform anything like that, but. Right, but you can oh. still generate as much energy within, you can still generate as much energy within yourself through masturbation. You know, um, if that's something I wish that you do do, then I suggest that you do it in order to attract um, what you want because you can simply move the energy up to the pineal gland, what is called the Kundalini Shakti, and the thought in which that you permeating or resonating the most with is what is going to help manifest it, then you will bring that energy back down, um, you know, towards the perineum, which is what we would say within the woman is actually the G-spot area, which is about an inch and a half to three inches inside of the vaginal area, in which that, if you were, you know, doing the proper stroke techniques with your fingers and generating that energy, then you can actually birth the idea into existence or manifestation. That's the science of okay. sex magic. And you can do it within yourself. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you, brother. Okay. Mm. All right. You got us. All right, right let's go to the next question. We got 214, area code 214. I think one four. you got enough up there, didn't you? Uh, I, I, I got uh, I got fell out, so I, I jumped back in. All right. Well, I got you in, right, so let's please, go God. to the next call. Hold on. We're going to have a little council here, hopefully, before we end. That's 301-301, area code you're on. Peace, peace. Peace. You're online. I can we can barely hear you. You low. Area code three zero one. All right, we're going um hopefully um brother try to come back in 
area code 301 with better um, speakers for we can hear what you're saying. Um, we got area code 347, New York again. You're on the line. Peace. Peace. Yeah, bro. I was, um, I was, yeah, I was trying oh, to okay. get um, yeah, I was trying yes, to get yes. folk, um, like I, I it's it's, it's kind of difficult for for uh, me to get involved when like, like when I'm trying to get into that 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 um concentrated dream state in regards to like staying focused. Right. I I, I end up just falling out and just wake you know like like going regular sleep. I I can't stay focused on on staying like. Mentally focused, involved in that 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 mind state where I could be in that lucid dream. Right. Well, the thing is, brother, you probably have to go a little bit further into your um, conscious. Remember, we speak about the fact that your breath itself has the ability to take you into the various conscious states. So, if you lower your breath from eighteen breaths, which in sleep normally you you have it around nine to seven point five breaths a minute, lower your mm. breath even more so six breaths. And you actually, if you are practicing that breath technique, which taps to the subconscious before you go to sleep, your body will react to that con- that breath state. So six breaths a minute is where you want to be at before you go to, you know, when, when you fall out to sleep. And that would actually take you right into um, lucid dreaming. You know, I know um, as a child, you know, being raised up as an adult, I was able to go into lucid dreams. Um, simply by just slowing my breath down and then just thinking about what I wanted to focus on and then my mind would take me right there as I went to sleep. And I would wake mm. up, you know, um, within the dream, knowing that I'm dreaming, in order to correct what I needed to, to correct because I was actually having, I had consciousness in the dream. Right. And so, you, you know, think- melanated, people, melanated people possess that ability uh, for those who have activated pineal glands um, and um, and is able to open the mouth of God, which is the medulla oblongata, we have that ability already. So it's just about you know um, to, you know um, slowing down your breath and relaxing, and you'll be able to tap into it, brother. Okay. Yeah, I, just, I feel like okay, this is this is the actual Kundalini experience right now. But I mean, this is live on stage right now, you know. Regarding right. the Kundalini, because I'm I'm trying to grab this and, and push this in the dream state, but you know, and, and I know uh, st- something rose because I mean the consciousness is there. I mean I got to get the details and all this focus, you know, and get that you know all the, everything lined up regarding the, the facts and, and and the information. But like this, right? Is, <laughs> it's, it's it's massive. You know. Right, right, right. Well, okay. I mean, yeah, the energy is there. And um, I mean this, this this is the thing. This this is what I noticed about us, um, Mark. Is um, I remember coming up in school with for a psychology class that you couldn't dream in color, but I'm like I've been dreaming in color, dreaming in color my whole life. So what the hell are you talking about? Right, right. right. But this is being mm-hmm. told, but this is being told to me by Europeans, a mm, European right. teacher, told me that. They don't dream in color. Yeah, that's crazy. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> the world is in color. Is your ass colorblind? <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I uh, can't even imagine you know, not dreaming in color. Right. right. And, and not just that. I, they just recently found out about the ability to lucid dream. But I've been doing mm. this shit all my life. <laughs> as children, wow. as, a, as a child, they told us that we couldn't do that. But I'm like, Mm -hmm. I'm doing this shit every night. What the hell are you talking about? I'm doing it whenever (laughs) I want to. (laughs) That was crazy. Yeah. You know, so Mm -hmm. these are things in which that, you know, if we listen to them, we wouldn't be doing any of our gifts or having any of our abilities on the dream world. And this this is really what they wanted us to not have. They don't want us to be able to change things on the astral because by us tapping beyond them, because... The energy in which that they're permeating from is actually what is called the first and second overtone level of the astral of the astral plane. So mm-hmm. there's seven overtone levels. They're on the first and second. So there's three, four, five, six, and seven levels of the astral plane. 
So they're on the lowest aspect. So if you went them to the higher aspect, you can manipulate the forces in which that they, you know, in other words, you can bypass what they're working with very easily. Right, right. So, okay. so we think we told to us as children so that we wouldn't have these gifts. But luckily, I was one of the ones who didn't believe the shit. <laughs> mm. right. I was more like, you know, just like when I seen white Jesus on the wall of a black church. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, I was five mm-hmm. years old and I remember sitting in church looking at the so called black choir, the black missionary board, the black deacon board, the black mm-hmm. usher board, the black mm-hmm. the black I'm on the white mirror. Black and white Jesus. And I'm like, what the hell is he doing here? My father, I was a master of Sesame Street, you know, and um, you know, I remember the song. One of these things just doesn't belong here. One of these things hmm. just doesn't belong. And so, as a master of Sesame Street, by t- I was watching it from two, hmm. by five, that's three years. Just like a nigga can take karate for three years and get a black belt. By the by time I was five, I was a master. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> shit just didn't fit. Right. Mm-hmm. This shit just didn't fit. All these niggas up in here with white Jesus on the wall. I'm sorry. And it's I still, fall it's for still the- going on, too. <laughs> right. Right. It's still going on, but it ain't going on with me up in that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll keep, going, keep it going, bro. I appreciate you, man. You, you, yeah. I appreciate you. Do your best, you man, because it's, it's, it's working, man. Everything is coming up. Right. It's, coming, it's lining up. No doubt, God. Appreciate you. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, All right, we got area code two six seven. Area code two six seven. You on the line? Divine peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Peace. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. This is Aparisha. Yes, peace. Peace, goddess. Peace. Okay, so I I was um I actually I was on hold for a minute and I done walked away, got some water, came back. <laughs> Okay. Hey, so, yeah, I forgot what I was going to ask and what I was going to say. Um, but right. I, I think I'll touch on the outer body experiences and and having okay. had lucid dreamings, uh, lucid dreams no, since I was mean. young. Um, I think my right. first outer body experience I was probably eight years old. Yeah, and, uh, I was nine. Yeah. yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. and actually, what I pictured was <clears throat> was one of them really dark. You know, it's dark in the house at night. Everyone sleep. All the lights are out, and I see like this right. spirit type hand, and it touches right. the top of my head and pulls me out my body. And I hear this pop, mm-hmm. like y'all were all discussing. Right. And I went to right. one level where the first level, everyone was a spirit body. Right. And then mm-hmm. I was pushed up into a different level, and I ended up at this table. A lot of you not. I ended, I'll ended. i never forget it. I ended up with at this table where I came through the floor, and I heard myself coming through the floor to the second level or third level, and there right. was supposedly like a Jesus Christ-type uh, person and uh, right. someone he was talking to, and he, he was talking and noticed me coming through the floor. And he said, you don't belong here. And it took me a minute to figure out, like, I've asked this before from people. They couldn't tell me. They were like, you know, you're just too scared to, you know, um, to face up, you know, to things in your dream. Okay, maybe at that time I was eight years old, you know. But um, what I've come to realize was everything that I've dreamt about from the time I was young and everything that I've learned up until now, Pretty much him telling me that I didn't belong there was an indicator that I did not belong in the Christian faith. Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, that's how mm. I received my dream. Mm. That's how I saw it. Right, today. right. And so um, I came out of that, you know, many years later, I came out of that and... and uh, I've been doing a lot of studying ever since. But those books that you dropped tonight, I can't say that I've ever 
came across any of them. These are some really powerful books. I haven't, I really haven't uh-huh. came across any of these books. Um, so I, I oh, have yeah, the list. Them. The only one I forgot, right. the only one I don't have, you said the African origin of, and biological I don't have, biological right. psychiatry. Right, biological by Dr. Richard King. Okay. And there he explains the 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 melanin effect and the, and the aspect of melanin and how it plays upon the the pineal gland, mm-hmm. or rather the lack thereof, application on the pineal gland. And mm-hmm. he states that five fifteen percent Africans have caused by pineal glands. That would account for what we refer to as black devils. Then mm-hmm. he says that. 20 to 20, 35% Asians have cosmopal pineal glands, but 60 to 80% Europeans have cosmopal pineal glands. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's deep. So that would, so that would account for um, their psychopathic tendencies because they have the most constipation amongst the people on the planet. Mm-hmm. And the reason why they act as they do mm-hmm. to the rest of the people on the, of, as we would say of color. Okay, makes sense. The other mm-hmm. thing I wanted to talk about was the the Ebola. Like some of uh, what I've been hearing, because people are like really paying attention, and you know, not people that I I would normally have conversation with on Facebook, but uh, right. you know, my neighbors and things of that nature right. um, have like this real mm-hmm. fear of Ebola. Right. And I'm right. sitting here right. listening. I'm in a gas company yesterday and I'm listening to the people talk about it. Right. And I'm and they've gotten to the point they're so they're so stressed and fearful that they're like send all the Africans back. And I'm like, "Wow." Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and I thought about it like this, you know, what oh, what if oh, the plan oh, rather, was to oh, get rather, all of, all of you all of you all of you leave and go back to Europe. Exactly. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> you, know, you know, since you're so fearful, take your ass back to where you came from, if that's the right. case, or the Caucasus Mountains. <laughs> and there were some of, there was some of our people right. as well. Well, we were oh, here I'm before sure. them anyway, so, I'm you know. sure. I'm sure. And I, I mm-hmm. couldn't believe my ears. They were, like, agreeing with each other, and I said, you know, if this was a plot to get them to actually have the public vote because I remember as a child watching how Cuba was allowed to enter mm-hmm. in immigration, but Haiti well, or Haitians were Haiti always wouldn't. turned away. Yes, exactly. Okay, and now here, you My know, we have you know a large. Hmm. I said we snuck up in here anyway because I got Haitian roots. We snuck up in here anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so. I'm right. listening to them discuss whether or not, you know, they want to, like, agree for it. Like, they have some say, but I guess to some degree they would have a say, you know. Um, if people are loud enough about it, you know, the ignorance mm-hmm. always spreads faster than, you know, the truth. And I'm sitting here like, okay, what would be, you know, the reason to send back all of these, you know, uh, West Africans uh, out of America, as people are, like, really getting to the point where they're, like, really fearful of Africans, you know, and um, right. it's always right. out of ignorance. And I said, okay, well, if of they're course. here in great numbers and eventually we're going to meet, meaning we're going to have to live side by side, a lot of us who are knowledgeable will have a chance to talk with them and, and really talk some real some real stuff and eventually we're going to start trading and if we start trading then we become competition and if we become competition oh we have a better chance so right. I, I think I think this Ebola situation you know as much as I think they would love to control and dominate the population they would have to wipe out majority of the planet to ever truly um, feel safe and uh, have a world without black right. people because we're global. Um, right. But, you know, without all of that hysteria being said, I think it's more so of a money situation. 
Um, mm-hmm. They just came out with the movie Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the new one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that spoke about, you know, releasing the virus so that the government can pay them $300 million or whatever money mm-hmm. to pretty mm-hmm. much, you know, mm-hmm. relieve the public from this this right. uh, disease or virus that kills people, airborne. You know, yeah. it's not anything right. that we, we haven't already known for them to do. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, if you let the Africans sell it, they're over there in uh, Nigeria and Sierra Leone and, you know, um, those places over there, they've already put it out there. It was the Red Cross that right. started those vaccinations. Sure. And those who were who died right. were those and who the received the inv- Exactly. The vaccinations, right. And they and they came through. And who sponsored it, we know, is Monto slash um, Bill Gates, who has over 500,000 shares in Monsanto. Um, it's GMO. It's nothing more than a combination of smallpox and chicken pox. Mm-hmm. You know, um, this this is what they're doing, you know, or trying to do. And it's coming, like you said, through the vaccine. Just like we figured out, you know, damn near 30 years ago about AIDS, you know, that it was coming right. through, mm-hmm. you know, that it was coming through the vaccinations and not to take the mm-hmm. AZT medicine. You know what right. I'm saying? So yep. yeah, we, we figured that out. So the same thing is being figured out even much quicker than it was then because of the fact of us being able now to communicate on a global network system, which is why the Africans um, started missionaries who was over, who uh, went over there spreading it, and they said, "Okay, well, we're gonna kill you," and that's what took mm-hmm. place, you know. Mm-hmm. And so now they find the bodies of these missionaries because um, the Africans are no longer sleep like that. Now we can communicate with the um, our brothers and sisters in Africa. Now, you know, mm-hmm. we have listeners from South Africa listening to this show, West Africa listening to the show, East Africa listening to this show right now. Mhm. Mhm. So people know what is going on. They no longer sleep. This this, this is right. a new day, new time, and the um, internet is a nail in their coffin. This shit is over. It's over. <laughs> it's over. All right. <laughs> I'm happy about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, I I appreciate you know having you 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 men on here sharing and giving a light. You know, I appreciate it. I, I was sitting here. I didn't have anything to do. And I said, well, I'm going to go to a show and listen in. And uh, okay. I got tons of information. So we appreciate you, Goddess. Mm-hmm. Indeed. I appreciate you both. All right. All right, Brother L. Um, you got any closing remarks? Uh, yes, I feel uh, <clears throat> highly motivated very spiritually and like always, always on the blog talk show. Always uh, good and uh, dropping science with your brother Eileen. And I also also getting a lot of good vibrations from the uh from the uh of the callers here tonight also, you know. A lot of good energy coming from them as well. Right. So I say, let's let's do it again next week. Oh yeah. No doubt next week. All right. Um, we appreciate y'all checking us out. First World Order Radio to our First World Order family. Um, we have some events coming up, so we definitely want y'all to check those out. Um, in particular, I have October the 25th, the event going on in Columbia, South Carolina, in which that we're going to be talking about the Holy Orgasm. So we're going to be there doing that. And that is at the Sphinx Paw, Two Notch Road. It's 3400 Two Notch Road in Columbia, South Carolina. And for those who want more information, call Brother James Washington. His um, number is 803-754-3922. That's 8, um, 803-754-3922. And that's October the 25th. It's going to be around 6 o'clock. Um, that is what we said around that time, 6 o'clock. And it's going to be on the Holy Orgasm. All right. Um, we had to do, we do that lecture because two years ago we did it with Brother Panic down in Atlanta. The brother never got the um, DVD to it. So um, we had to redo it and I put out the new information concerning that because I did this tape 10 years ago in which that it had 3 million hits, over 3 million hits on, on, um, on YouTube. 
This one will be going for $10 million or more. We're going to make it go diamond. All right, so um, check us out on there. Then we got coming up um, at Black Nobel, um, 1409 West Erie Avenue in Pennsylvania, um, in Philadelphia. It's going to be called The Power of Human Consciousness and the Mastery of the Holy Breath. And that's going to be November the 8th and the 9th. All right, so we're going to be going to the lecture the first day, which is on the 8th, and on the 9th, we're going to be going into um, the actual expo um, in which that we show you how to do it yourself. All right. Um, then we have possibly a conference coming up with Dr. Layla Africa. I'll be speaking on the panel with Dr. Layla Africa. Um, Dr. Melanie um, Stevenson, or Dr. Ann Brown, who is also one of the writers of, of one of the books in which that I did earlier, which is Why Darkness Matters, the Power of Melanin in the Brain. Um, she wrote a portion of that book, as well as also Patricia Newton, and also Professor Kabaha Wather, and invited guest Joshua Sara. So um, we'll be on that panel this um, and it's called the conference, the superconductor, you and the universal one. All right. This is a tribute to our ancestor, Dr. Richard King, who's the author of the Black Dot and the Melanin Man, as well as also, um, the Origin of Biological Psychiatry. All right. So, and also Melanin, the key to freedom and key to freedom. All right. So we want you there for that. That is the simple. The seventh, all right, December the seventh at the National Black Theater. All right. December the seventh at the National Black Theater. Then we also have um, coming up um our event, which is Healing Wings Institute, um Health and Wellness Expo. That's December the twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth. We had that coming up. Um check us out. All right, the following week we're trying to do it at Frontline Books in Chicago. All right, that's the mastery of body, mind, soul, and spirit. All right, or spirit and soul. And um, so be doing it the whole year. Just come and check us out, yo. You know what I'm saying? I got more coming up, and I'll, and I'll put the dates to them, you know, soon. Shoot, we got it, we got it all the way until February, yo. So um, check us out. We love y'all. Peace. Yeah. Hey, 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 brother. Yeah. Hey, uh, do you, do you have to get out? Or can can I ask like another question? Is it too late? Oh, go ahead. I... No, go ahead. All right. Um. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, then I got like I mean I really got like a million questions for you, but you know I'm trying to put it all together. Like I was, I was listening to Hakeem Bay on her one time, and, and he was saying uh-huh. how like uh it's certain energy centers, like I mean well certain certain ley lines and certain like certain areas that that have like right. specific right. energy right. and right. and like so like and our people since we didn't you know we didn't been here many many years life is a cycle so we we really ain't doing right. nothing but repeating our, our ancient history so like in my city I live in Dallas and I know it's a lot of specific areas where you know our people are and they've been there, you know, since I've been alive. You, you know what I'm saying? And and it's like, right. I remember he was saying something about how, uh, you know, they they built over a lot of our ancient cities, and that they hid a lot of stuff by uh, putting right. putting like golf courses up where you know our people can't go right. and dig up under. And and like it's one, it's like a golf course like in the middle of the hood here in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? And it, it just made right. me think, like, is is this one of them places? You know what I'm saying? Right. More than, right. More than likely, it was a mound that was there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Just like that, huh? Yep. So, our, so our people just still just magnetized towards that. Huh. So is it like that? Are people just still are drawn towards that energy just naturally? Well, I mean, there's certain thing that you can practice. Um, you know, your breathing exercises, qigong, tai chi, reiki, pranic healing. Um, these are just you know 
energy modalities that you can master. Um, our energy source and being able to absorb energy is unlimited because we have melanin. So mm-hmm. yeah. we actually, the 300,000 tons of stardust energy that falls to the planet Earth daily, your physical body is composed of 93, 90 to 93% stardust energy. Um, so what that means is, is that your whole purpose of having melanin is to absorb energy, to absorb, um, to absorb light. So, so, and back in the, did the ancients usually sleep during the day and work at night? What the ancients like to get? Yeah, like back in the like to get the sun energy regularly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I mean, they used to um, rise with the sun and go to sleep with the sun. I, that was before TVs, of course. Right. Uh, you know, uh, so soon after, you know, they would light candles, and you know, soon after, you know. Um, they get dark, you know. Mostly during the winter time, they would have, you know, have to light candles because it would get, you know, dark five o'clock or so in the winter time. And of course, you know, ain't too many people going to sleep at five o'clock, yo. So, yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, so, so of course, back in the days, they would have some candles lit or whatever they needed in you know, order to do some right. research or study. You know, or whatever it is, they would read books. You know, um, I mean, now we got lights and you know whatever else that we use now, and light bulbs or lighting systems or whatever in the homes. And you know, um, sometimes we don't go to sleep. You know, when we're supposed to. Yeah. As long as you yeah. Sleep, you know, your eight hours. That's good. You know what I'm saying? You sleep just eight hours. Um, if you're younger. Um, children need at least almost 10 hours for development, especially when they're going through puberty. So, you know, once that, you know, once they, you know, once we get this down pat, I, you know, um, I remember Baba Dick Gregory, you know, the fact is that it's his birthday. Um, you know, I remember him stating the fact that the two things in which that we die most, most of is actually dehydration and, and sleep deprecation. Hmm. Um, so one like one last question. Like I heard on I heard on your show one time. The hell? Thank you, Shane. Uh-huh. <laughs> Appreciate <Damn>. God. <laughs> <laughs> well constipation, put it that way. Niggas constipated. They be dying quick too, shit. Not being able to defecate. Okay, let's get it right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, them toxins and poisons build up, you know, up in the system. But it's a solution, right? But sleep deprivation. deprivation, exactly. Thank you. I'm tired my damn self. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I appreciate it, man. I let you go, man. I appreciate you, bro. I I, I hit time next time. All right, now, peace, bro. All right, peace. Thank you. Peace.